Come on, Owen. Bye. Have a good day. My name's George the Poet, but right now I'm Uncle George, watching my nephews play with their friends. I'm 20 years older than these kids, and I'm imagining what the next 20 years will be like for them. Some of them will obviously be dead. Some in jail. Some sitting right here watching their own kids, asking the same questions. People get uncomfortable when you talk about children like that. Like there's a cause and effect relationship between the things we say aloud and the way the future pans out. Like these negative prospects are less likely for our children if we don't acknowledge the current reality. Maybe words really are that powerful. Or maybe that's just a story we tell ourselves to imagine power into existence. Everything you know is a story, an idea that you've accepted until the day you cross it out and replace it with a better answer. When I was in school, there was a planet called Pluto. Turns out there's not. I mean, Pluto's still there. It's just not a planet anymore. Personally, I have no opinion on Pluto because I wasn't there at the time. But when it comes to this beautiful, resilient, overlooked, traumatized community, I got skin in the game. I got 27 years of experience. So no matter what stories come up in the papers about our trigger happy gangland or our state dependent single mums, I remember everything firsthand. In fact, we all do. So why is it that we as a community have no control over our narrative? Our main storytellers are rappers, but the rappers of today are facing the same struggles NWA did around the time I was born. How? Housing, schools, crime, unemployment, is that it? We now provide the fuel for a multi-billion dollar storytelling industry and all we have to show for it is new versions of the same story. So anyway, I'm watching these kids playing, wondering how many of them will die from stab wounds versus bullet wounds, which of them will get sectioned first, what kind of drugs they'll be selling in 20 years, how Brexit will affect their exposure to firearms. And I got an idea. We should revisit our story and instead of retelling it, we should rewrite it. I'm not saying let's fabricate history. I'm saying let's learn to interpret what we're going through in a way that makes us stronger and leaves us with a better idea of how to manage it. So on that cheerful note, <laughs> welcome to my podcast. Picture something for me. Picture a car driving down the road towards you. Right now you're live in my Birmingham shop. The closer it gets, the more excited you get. Make sure your phone's off. Oh, by the way, sorry, quick note about the blindfolds. You can take them off whenever you want. I just feel like it will work better if you start off with it. You're just staring at me like, nope. <laughs> it's fine. That's right. Close your eyes if you can't find it. It's all good. Um... The car's getting closer towards you. Um, and as it approaches, you hear music, just like a music video. And it's something like this. So you just got the outside shot, but we're in the car now. You're sitting in the back. What should we sing my heart out? Head northwest on oh. Barrett Road, then turn right onto <laughs> Stone Nest Street. I'm listening to Ooh Wee by Dundee. A song about hustling seven days a week, and right now that resonates with me. Furthermore, Dunn's work's mature. His music's so smooth, it makes the trap sound like a pleasant place to be. Personally, I don't know how he does it. Singing about shutting, ain't that putting all your business out in public? And all that money in the video looking like a major label album budget. <laughs> One second, this is my bit though. Always been a paper chaser, 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 paper. 
Taking shots to the ups, making paper I'm a boss, take a what, fuck a hater Pull up on your blocks like what, man, a blazer Six bags for a box, see you later Fuck the melodies with the keys, man, a major That's my tune, he's a faker Get your money, ya <laughs> When I first heard this tune, I just gave a man a spud And it's not for the fact that he's saying a bag of crud You see with guys that work with drugs They might just burst the slug They might just jerk the plug I don't know if that's how it has to be or if that's just the effect of pride. But what I do know is Dundee's got a mad reflective side. So what is it then? You go through hell on earth to die to go to heaven or you go through heaven on earth and you die and go to hell. That's basically what's happening. These are good questions and they're particularly relevant to all my hood brethren's. In a community where there's not much generational wealth and there's only so many legal ways of elevating yourself. And they tell you Right, education will help, but you've you've left school with not much to say for yourself. So now you're hustling white, and you've been in a couple of fights, but you scuffed with a knife, so you've all cut up a couple of guys. But they say God will judge you for what you decide to do, not what you tried to do. So does his mercy still apply to you? It's got me bugging all the time, it's been like a merry go hey, If it ain't about the money, then I'm sorry, I don't want to know Where the Elijah's, where the Joshua's, do you feel me? Yeah. Now, what happened to the other guys? Like, yeah. the guys that, do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> so, everyone puts themselves in that superior place, but there's bare man on the side. Who's that man there, though? <laughs> <laughs> Who's that man? Because it's not me, bro. And everyone's going to tell you that it's not them. Who's them man? Yeah, they never got mixed That's what I'm saying, though. Like, so, who decides who gets a mixtape, bro? Do you, do, do you feel me? At northeast on Tollington Park. So now I'm driving in silence, trying to decide how to fit these thoughts into a song, saying to myself, you owe it to the people that supported you this long. But you know what I realised? I talked to you lot wrong. I can't shoehorn this into a three-minute song with two verses and two choruses, only to be bored at my own performances. Nah, I need a more potent form for this. I need to introduce you to the people in my life, The ones that are telling me I'm keeping them alive. It's like Dunn was saying, the other people in the Bible. Because telling your own story is the secret to survival. If I can make you grieve and cry and celebrate and laugh with me, it might help you understand the generation after me. Especially in times like this when better days are hard to see. Younger's moving mad. Since the start of the year, it's like a hundred youths been stabbed. But it's better to embrace them in this mayhem than cage them, because once they come out, it's like we relegate them partially. It's like Nine said, these guys want to blast for their squad, do 30 and still got an answer to God. Or they beat the case and they can't get a job, can't leave the life behind, it's like they're part of the mob. I'm telling you, something crazy is happening. And the key to understanding it may be this rapping thing. This is a freestyle from a young rapper called Ambush. Big up Kenny Allstar, I've had this on repeat. It sounds like he's just talking badness on the beat. But remember, this is life experience, madness on the street. What's he supposed to do? Not expose his truth. You might not like what he has to say, but man, them gotta eat. Real life trying to let man know Man came from the bottom like started Get sucked if a man got blow Get wrapped if a man shot raps Get jacked if a man too show Huh? Made a man then pull up loud See a lot of this music is full of hatred and sin And that's cause it comes straight from the wing From the cage, from the bing Where guys take the rap cause they ain't gonna sing But there ain't much to do other than read books and bang weights in the gym She was standing in the way Trying to let man know Do lots and a man do loads do blocks and a man do roads Do crops and a man do grows Listen, listen to what he's saying man done time But it's fine cause a man had phones Came through trees and a man did froze Made of stuffs and a man flew drones What? Trying to let man know 
This guy just said he sold drugs in jail using phones and drones. I'm not saying this to expose the bro. Obviously, he's put this out there, which I don't condone. But you have to ask yourself, why would he discuss this recklessly? Let's ask the Justice Secretary. Talking about spice and other drugs ordered with a Deliveroo-style responsiveness on tiny mobile phones from prison cells and delivered by drones direct to cell windows. All right, let's, let's think about this logically. Obviously... In jail, a lot of money gets made off drugs. Now, according to, this is nice out here, isn't it? Now, according to uh, Ambush, he was able to do this because he paid off govs. You, you know what he means, yeah? That's prison officers. As opposed to prison governors. See, this has been a persistent issue for different governments, and they all talk about how they're going to make adjustments, and it's no different here. We have the Secretary of State for Justice, um, a man called David Gork. Sometime in early March, he gave a talk in which he said... In fact, I'll, I'll just play it to you. Increasing the numbers of prison officers and deploying them in a more effective way will help create more positive relationships between offenders and prison officers. But if we are to bear down on the levels of violence, we need to deal with the biggest cause of the violence, which is drugs. <laughs> See, it's interesting. He recognised the need for more prison officers, but the solution he put forth didn't offer this. Instead... He took it back to the war on drugs, positioning, you know, offenders as morons, thugs. It is clear that the reason drugs are so prevalent in our prisons is in large part because gangs are fueling demand, boosting the supply and catching prisoners in a cycle of debt and further criminality from which they struggle to break free. So the number one reason people take drugs in jail is because money-hungry prisoners force them to. Not the fact that they're locked in a cage and they're struggling with emotions that cause them to. Gangs enforcing control by using threats and violence towards prisoners, extorting their families and attempting to corrupt prison staff. (laughs) Attempting. A 2017 report by the Howard League found that a lot of prison officers feel like their importance is neglected. It said they feel undervalued, understaffed, ill-trained, ill-equipped, um, and generally ignored and ineffective. So when you've got the Justice Secretary up there acting like there's no way these guys could ever be compromised, let's just put it all into perspective. From the conventional to the cunning, by design or device, through fear or intimidation, these criminal gangs will stop at nothing to maintain their access to such a lucrative market. (laughs) If the purpose of prison is rehabilitation, you can look at his approach and see the limitations. If it wasn't for drastic reductions in prison staff, evidence suggests we'd be heading down a different path. A recent study by the Runnymede Trust and Greenwich University's Faculty of Law sheds light on the potential reasons why a prisoner might end up living like a casualty of war. Despite staff numbers having heavily decreased, the prison population has steadily increased. Some people end up locked in their cell for half a week, which is peak. No exercise, minimal human contact. So how much drug abuse do you think stems from that? And statistically, if you're black, Muslim or mentally ill, there are more consequences you could potentially feel. Our prisons need more officers, staff diversity, and training on cultural awareness unless we care more about punishment than fairness. Now there's two ways of listening to rap. You can focus on what's missing or take a deeper look at what's there. In the piece I just played you, Ambush talked about a girl getting punched in the face, drug dealers getting robbed of their product, and guys getting stabbed up in front of their loved ones. Now, if we focus on what's missing, we could say his words lack compassion or even humanity. Alternatively, listen closer and you'll notice how he keeps repeating the same line. Real life, trying to let man know. He warns his audience about the danger of getting lost in the bando, i.e. losing your way to the drug game. This implies not only that he's addressing young people like himself, possibly caught up in crime, but also that he promotes aspiration, even in this dark and depraved space. I can explain that to you, 
because I'm native to that environment and Ambush reminds me of people I love. So I'm able to put his words in context and recognise the social value of them. This kind of critical analysis is a habit that I picked up from studying English literature. Nothing's ever said without reason, even if it's a lie. So instead of letting rap music wash over us, resenting or ignoring the experiences these young commentators are sharing with us, let's try and understand where their stories are coming from. It wasn't hard for me to link Ambush's freestyle with the Justice Secretary's speech. They were released within about a week of each other and I listened to them both over and over again. Now I'm grateful for everyone who's listening to this right now, but I'm addressing my rappers here. If you're really from the hood, especially if you've got a big following, please my guy, push these conversations as far as you can. Did you really sell all those drugs? just to get famous and spend the rest of your life talking about that time you had to sell drugs? Or was it so that you could speak with decision makers on a higher level and offer insight that they might not have? You trying to make a little money for you and your peoples? Or are you trying to stand for something? Police, Crown Prosecution Service, National Probation Service, National Offender Management Service. Who has more expertise in dealing with these people than you? Come on. See, our community is so immersed in the criminal justice system. But really and truly, what did they know about this life? Think about it. How many people in the Ministry of Justice have experienced crime? How many people in the Ministry of Justice have a family member doing serious time? Do they bring that trauma with them into the office? Or do they come with a whole lot of theory in mind? How many people in the Ministry of Justice have ever confused a gunshot with a firework? And how many of them are from an environment where everyone's shot and buying work? Do they know what it's like to flirt with death without ever realising how close you're getting? Where crime starts off as a means of survival, then becomes part of the social setting? Cuz, do you think the prison minister has ever spent a night in a cell, writing his mail while his cellmate's slicing himself? See, the perspective I'm describing is so inner city. If you haven't lived through it, I don't expect you to show sin as pity. See, if their idea of justice is based only on legal precedent, you have to ask yourself, who do these people represent? It's not the ones most affected. Do we need more evidence for all of the brothers, fathers, sons, sisters, daughters and mums missing in our community? Anything less than criminal justice reform? feeble recompense And there you have it. Have you heard George's podcast episode one? Big up Ben Brick. Big up Mikey J. Yeah, my brother. Big up Mark Five every single time. Thank you to um, Dundee. Thank you to C Figs. Thank you to Ambush. Georgia Smith. Fam, listen. Obviously, I want you to discuss this. So by all means, at me, at George the Poet on everything. If you're studying, take it to your lecturers. If you're a teacher, take it to your students. I want to know what conversations come out of that. Bearing in mind, I'm hiring right now. So if you're interested in roles in communications and engagement, social media and research, just check out georgethepoet.com, hit the opportunities tab and send your CV to jobs at georgethepoet.com. Blessings. And, and by the way, if I sound tired, it's because, I mean, it is, it is 1 a.m. right now. Just thought you should know that. Catch you on the rebound. Episode 2 soon come.